All right, in this video, we're going to have a look at this RTEC ACDC TIG 161. Um, we're going to test the DC on stainless and the pulsar, see how that works. And I got on okay with it once we fixed a couple of issues that I think I probably created hooking up my torch to it. So keep watching and enjoy. Okay, YouTube, welcome to another video on the RTEC. Uh, ACDC TIG 161. Now I'm not getting on as well with this machine as I should and I don't think it's the machine. Uh, something has happened either when I hooked up this torch to it or something's... it feels like... I can't see very easy. The art looks like a little bit foggy and fuzzy as if the tungsten's not sharp but it is. I've swapped out the tungsten I think I've got a gas coverage issue and it may be something I've disturbed in the in the uh, torch line or something. Anyway, this is well and a bit slow, so I'm going to just show you the control panel and bump the amps up a little bit, see if that works better after cleaning the tungsten because I just stabbed it into the well puddle. Great. Alright guys, so that was 55 amps and that was a little low. I was moving a bit slowly, so we'll go for the... And uh, we'll go up 5. 60 amps, hopefully they will move a little faster and the result will be a little less heat input. Hopefully this is going to get us... Um, if I didn't light up too close and contaminate the tungsten already. A better... yeah, that's much better. Travel speed is much better. I've floored the pedal. My feed hand is not great tonight and it's not wearing a glove so it's getting a bit hot because I've had a grinder incident with my pinky as you can see and that is starting to throb a little bit. So forgive me if I'm a little bit behind the curve tonight. But, uh, this is better. Alright, I'm not very happy with any of these welds. There, there is a, well A, I haven't cleaned the material spotlessly and B, there's a gas coverage issue. But it is a good demonstration. Going up five amps because I was traveling faster has made a narrow bead with less heat input. Okay, the 55 amp penetrated too much. The 65 amp isn't actually too bad on a penetration side. It's gruffy, but uh, yeah, more amps, less total heat input because of the faster travel speed. Right, gas coverage wise, I'm going to start at the torch end. I've cleaned up these little diffuser screens in here and put a new, new uh, CK gas lens on there. Actually, when I unscrewed the cup, the gas lens came off with it, so it's possible that that wasn't tight and some air was getting in there. And uh, yeah, start at the torch end. The other thing I discovered is when I connected up this new welder was that this gas line uh, which was previously down on the floor because it exited the big miller on the floor had been run over by probably one of the wheels got a tiny leak in it so I've shortened that it doesn't look pretty but shortened the gas line got rid of a leak there changed the gas lens tighten that up put my jazzy 10 on and I think we'll just go for a test piece. I'll clean the metal a lot better and we'll see the difference that makes. All right, I just lit up briefly on the copper fixture there to get the post gas going because this welder has no pre gas function. So um, you can just do that and then start the arc while the post gas is flowing from the little strike on the copper. Uh, this is this is looking better, but I need to clean the material better. I'm just having one more practice. But with this new gas lens and the gas line sorted out, I can see the puddle more clearly. The arc is less foggy, which, if that makes any sense, you've probably come across that. All right, this is my test piece. Just get it out of my little copper fixture there, and this is this is so much better. Cleaning the material properly, changing the gas lens, fixing a possible leak in the gas hose to the torch has made the difference between scruffy welds with black soot around them 
and, and grey on the back side to a cleanish, cleanish, smooth weld with a decent penetration side. There's a bit of a blobby tack on one end, but they do allow you to discard the ends. I think we've got a just about acceptable test piece there for a BCAR weld test. So we'll send that one off and see what happens. All right, so another way to reduce overall heat inputs on stainless, as we probably all know, is pulsing. And this Artec welder that I'm kind of getting used to at the moment has a pulse function. Okay, and the way it works is, if this is set, okay, base current there and pulse current there. If this is set way down below the pulse, below the base current, no pulsing will occur. As you push the foot pedal, the current will ramp up from five until you're at full pedal, and then it will be the set current, which is whatever's displayed here. As you bring up pulse current, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to draw this, it's hard to explain. As you bring the pulse current above the base current, you will get a pulse based on pulse width which is set here and a pulse frequency set here. Uh, pulse width is the percentage on time, in other words how long the pulse is um, and it seems to be as a fraction of the of the pulse frequency, right? So from 0.1 to 0.9 times the, the pulse frequency. If that's not too confusing. Uh, I'm going to try and have to do a quick back of the envelope explanation of how this works. Let's supposing we've set our base current about halfway up the scale, 100 amps, for example, and a pulse current, okay, something like that. Because this is set down to five, there's never gonna be any pulsing effect. So as I, as I press on the foot pedal, the current will ramp up until I reach full pedal at a hundred and whatever I do with the foot pedal here that's my base current but it goes from 5 amps to 100 at full pedal if I set 100 on the base here okay now let's suppose now that I bring the pulse current up to 100 That means that the pulse, and let's say it's at one pulse per second, and these are seconds. And let's say that the pulse width is about 30% of the pulse time. Okay, this is around 100. Then the pulses, each second, will be superimposed on top of this wave for about 30% of the total pulse width. Okay, so this is the sort of thing that we're gonna get. So that's with base and pulse set the same and using the foot pedal. So if I floor the foot pedal and bring the base current right up to the pulse current, there'll be no pulse. As you back off the foot pedal, the pulses become noticeable and pronounced. Um, you'll actually have this. And if you back all the way off the foot pedal, the background current will fall right away and you'll basically just have the pulses. Okay, so what you would normally do is set your base current somewhat lower. And that's what we're gonna do next. Setting the switcher on. We're gonna try setting the base current to 50. Uh, no, I'm going to try setting the base current a bit lower. Base current to 30. 
and a pulse current there are no markings on here but it does go from 5 to 160 so I'm going to go roughly double I'm going to aim for roughly double what the base current is just to see what happens pulse width let's go somewhere near the 30 percent and pulse frequency about one second one pulse per second I think okay let's see what that gives us all right now this I kind of like um, for a little lap joint where you don't need to use filler <laughs> because I've killed my filler hand with the grinder um, this is really quite a pleasant experience I don't mind this at all the pulsar on the, the old synchro wave didn't wasn't quite this crisp and in the on off so I, I really like this and uh, we'll see what that looks like in a second Right, apart from my general incompetence and stabbing the tungsten into the puddle, this is not too, yeah, I mean, it seem worse. I'm going to change the settings a bit and just try another one, see what happens. Right, I'm going to tweak the settings just a little bit. I'm going to do a slightly shorter on time, slightly higher pulse frequency, a little bit faster pulse. I'll leave these as they are, I think you often... The base current's about 30 and the pulse current's about 100. Often the base current about a third of the pulse current works okay. So let's try that. All right, I quite like this as well. Um, I'm just gonna like turn this piece around so you can see a bit better and I'll try welding a nice straight weld at this setting, see what happens. All right, I've just turned the workpiece around so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. I'm going to light up there on the copper just to get the post gas going so it acts as a pre-gas which this welder doesn't have. And then I'm just going to move steadily along just watching the top corner of the top plate and it's set about right at the moment. That very quick flash of 100 amps is just barely nipping that corner and this is a really good way to avoid melting that top corner by sort of dramatically reducing the heat input because the pulse is on for a short time but it also tends to blast quickly down into the root of the weld when that pulse does come on so it's a good way to get uh, particularly on a little lap joint like this where you're not using filler to get some ripples a nice looking weld I'm getting bound up on the clamp here but I'm going to get past it I'm determined a nice looking weld and you know if you just want it to look pretty this can be a really good way to do it all right I just show you these welds in the daylight uh, I don't know what's wrong with me when the camera's on I can't even hold a steady travel speed but I think I quite like the one the first one we did with the slower pulse um, and the one with the faster pulse depends on your personal preference but it is a really good way on a little lap joint like this on thin stainless, this is 50,000 stainless, to reduce the heat input and still get penetration to the root. So thanks for watching. Please, please subscribe if you like these videos and please click the thumbs up and share because it helps a lot. Thank you for watching. Good night.